Hi, welcome to my channel Ruby Stedman. Today I will be teaching you how to knit this gorgeous hat. This is for a kid around 3 to 6 years old, almost 7, around that age range. Uh, this is perfect for those beginners that never done color work and want to do something different than just the regular one color hat or stripes. Uh, this is perfect to do to play with colors. Uh, this is just a net hat that I done with three strand. First with three strand of this color, and then I was changing the color of the strands as I went. But just as a net hat, nothing difficult about it. Uh, so perfect for beginners. If you want to do this hat, you can do it different sizes. Uh, this one, like I said, is for three to six, seven years old because it's really stretchy. So this is for William. William is uh, two, but he wears three years old clothes. So by the time winter come, winter is coming. <laughs> um, this will fit no problem for quite a few years. I'm gonna give you the different measurement from different size hat that you can make like this. Like I say, this is a very easy hat. Uh, if you're doing one for newborn you will do uh, 14 inches for the circumference or 36 centimeter. The height will be around 6 inches in total or 15 cent uh, centimeters. The 3 to 6 month it will be 17 inches of uh, circumference that is 43 centimeter or 7 inches of the height that is 18 centimeter. From six months to one year, uh, 18 inches of circumference, that's 46 centimeters, 7.5 inches for the height, or that is 19 centimeters. From 12 months to three years, uh, is 19 inches for circumference, that is 48 centimeters, or and 8 inches for the height, that is 20 and a half centimeters. From three to 10 years, is 20 inches of circumference that this one is in that range that is 51 centimeter that is 8.5 inches of height or 22 centimeter so that is give or take because it's not the same to do a hat for a three years old than a 10 years old so it's in between 20 inches of circumference uh, 19 and a half 19 and three quarter you know you have to play around with that uh, the same for a 10 years old can be 20, 20 and a bit and you know a few 20 and a half, 20 and one quarter inches for the circumference. The same for the height. It's not the same do one hat for a 3 years old than a 10 years old but the height is a little bit bigger so you will have to play uh, give or take from 8 inches to 8.5, 8.5 and or 8.6 you know like so. So I wanted to mention that that way um, you can do this hat for different sizes uh, you can use different color like I say I never done this network with this loops and thread yarn and let me tell you I'm hooked I think all my winter hat I'm gonna make with this yarn because it's soft very stretchy and very easy to work with because don't split when you're uh, netting with the three strands. So, I hope you uh, you like it and give it a try. And here is the list of material you're gonna need to make it. And if you are not already a subscriber, please subscribe, click on the little bell, that way you get notification each time I upload a video. Remember, I do my videos in Spanish and English. If you ever receive a Spanish video and you want to see it in English, you go to the main page on my channel or under this uh, video where it says Ruby Stedman, you click in there and that will bring you to that page of my channel. And the two first videos that you will see in a row, it will be my newest one. So it will be one in Spanish and one in English. So you can watch the English version of that video. Uh, so let's start making uh, this beautiful hat. And next week I'll be making a matching uh, neck warmer or 
little cowl. To do this hat, I'm gonna use this uh, yarn. It's the loose and thread, well like similar lane. They are fine one, 85% acrylic, 15% uh, nylon. They have 100 grams or 620 meters. The color this one is chocolate and this one a 10. But I'm gonna call it caramel because I like caramel and chocolate. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna use three strands of each color. So I'm gonna use three ball to pull from the center one strand on e uh, from each one. But if only you have two of these, one of each color, you can do three ball with this one and three ball with this one, and then work with those. But since I want to make a matching uh, neck warmer or cowl for William. Uh, I'm gonna use those three separate balls. Um, the netting needles that I'm gonna use is this 16 inches long and 4.5 millimeter and 4.5 millimeter double pointed needle. If you don't have these type of needles, I'm gonna leave a link in the description box below where you can purchase them. I'm not selling them, but where I bought them. So I have these markers that are all the same for when it's time to do the, do the decrease and this one that is different for the beginning and end of the rounds. You're going to need a measurement tape, tape, tapestry needle and Something scissors. Something that I wanted to show you is if by any reason you want to slow down my videos you can go here in the setting in the video and you'll see a speed you click on the speed and to the top will be a slow and to the lowers it will be faster. You can do this with all my videos or any video in YouTube. To start casting on or 73 stitches we need to leave a tail long enough to cast on but you can do uh, any type of cast on that you like. I like the long tail cast on. Okay so I'm gonna wrap in my needle one two three four five six seven a nine and ten. Ten and ten is twenty. Twenty and twenty is forty. And you fold it in half is sixty. Plus another piece for the sixteen. That is uh, thirteen. That is seventy six. Seventy three. So you're going to start doing a slip knot. Make sure that when you do the slip knot, you pass these three strands inside here. Okay? So if you never net before, I'm going to leave some link here and how to net for beginners. So if you would like to learn, you can. So you're going to cast on your 73 stitches and when you count your stitches you have to count three strand at a time okay so I will meet you here when I have my 73 stitches something that I wanted to mention is that the stitch that we're gonna do is one net one pearl for the brim so it's multiple of two plus one for the last stitch that is the 23. So if you want this for a, for a baby, you can do 60 stitches plus one. If you want a little bit bigger, you can do 64 plus one, or 66 plus one, 68 plus one, 70 plus one, and so on. Okay? But you have to make sure that you have the extra to close the loop. Here I have my 73 stitches, and I did a knot here, not too tight, just to secure my work. Usually I do my hat by closing this first round, but this time I don't gonna close the first round, I'm gonna close in the second round because we're gonna do a, a very elastic cast on. So we're gonna net the first one and we're gonna pass the second as a pearl, but we don't gonna pearl that stitch. And then we net the next one and then we pass the uh, fourth one like a pearl, but we don't gonna pearl that stitch, okay? So you're going to work one and pass one, work one, pass one, as a pearl. And then in the next round, we will do the uh, 
circumference of the hat, you know, we close the hat, and then we're going to do one more round, but that time we're going to pass the net and purl the pearls, okay? Pass the net and purl the pearls. Um, and then after that we start with the one net, one pearl, okay? So I'm going to start here with the first one. And it's a net. Now the second is a pearl, so you're going to pass your yarn to the front, like you're going to pearl that stitch, and you're going to pass it to the other needle without working. Okay? So yarn to the back, and then net the next one. Yarn to the front, like to pearl. You pass the stitch, but you don't want to pearl that stitch. Yarn to the back, you net the next one. Yarn to the front as to pearl, and you're going to pass the stitch without working. Yarn to the back, you're going to pearl the next one. Yarn to the front as to pearl, but you're just going to pass the stitch, yarn to the back, and you're going to net the next one. Yarn to the front front as to pearl, you're going to pass that stitch, yarn to the back, and let me move my stitches, and then we're going to net the next one. Like that you're going to continue working all the way until the end, okay? You're going to net one and pass the other as to pearl, but without doing a pearl. So like this, you pass yarn to the front and pass the next one to your other needle and yarn to the back and net the next one. So I will meet you here at the end of this round. All we finish the round and you start with the net and finish with the net because we're gonna um, uh, cast off one of these and it will be only one, okay? So now you have to make sure that this is not twisted in the center, all of them facing to the inside, not twist, otherwise uh, they had gonna be not good. So now we have to place in the, mark the marker, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this last stitch very careful not to lose any loop because that will be our first stitch in here. So you're going to place your marker and put those stitches back to your needle, okay? So that will be the beginning and end of your rounds. So now you're going to pass the first a stitch to your right hand needle and it will be easy to pull this off because with your hands or your finger or your nails you can pull the last stitch pass it over this one that you pass to this side and then pull your yarn and that will tight your work and you don't want to get any seam Okay, so that counts as the first stitch and it's a net stitch. Now in this round we're going to uh, purl the pearls and uh, pass without working the nets. So that one is a net, now we're going to purl the next one. So you have, you see that pearl, you don't work in the row before but you're going to work them now. So you're going to purl that one. You're going to bring yarn to the back as to net and then you're going to pass that stitch with the, with the uh, needle and the front, like so. Yarn to the front, purl the next one. Yarn to the back, as to net, and pass the next stitch without working. Yarn to the front, purl the next one. And you'll get a really nice uh, border in the right side of your hat in here. Okay, and you have to move the stitches as you work. So yarn to the back as to net, and then the next one you will pass without working. Yarn to the front and purl the next one. Yarn to the back as to net, and moving the stitches. That way it's easier. And then you pass this one without working. Yarn to the front 
your pearl the next one you are to the back as to pearl and then you pass the stitch without uh, yarn to the back as to net and then you pass the stitch without working yarn to the front you purl this one yarn to the back as to net but you're going to pass it always with your tip of your needle and top of the other one this one will go on top almost like you're going to do a purl but you just pass it to the other side yarn to the front your purl with the three strands <laughs> leaving one behind and then yarn to the back as to net but you're going to pass the stitch like a pearl and like that you're going to continue all the way around and in the next round we're going to start with one net one pearl we're going to work all the stitches and we're going to do a twist net that will look really nice okay but it's very easy so you're going to pearl this one and yarn to the back as to net and pass the stitch without work and like that you're going to continue all the way until the end i finished the round with a pearl and then now we're going to start one net one pearl we're going to net the net and pearl the pearl but we're going to net uh in a twist stitch do the net a little bit twisted and we're going to do that usually i do my regular net working from the front to the back but this time we're going to work in the back strand that's what i'm going to make the nice twist uh, uh, net stitch okay so you net the first one and pearl the second one net the next one in the back strand and pearl the next one Yarn to the back, net the net in the back strand. This is a twisted rib. That's how I call it. And always moving your stitches. Okay. And pearl. Yarn to the back, net in the back strand. Yarn to the front, pearl. Yarn to the back, knit in the back strand, yarn to the front, pearl. Do your stitches, yarn to the back, always to the back strand in here, okay? Like that. And knit that one. And a pearl. And like that you're going to continue all the way around and every single round until you have two inches of brim. If you're making the hat a little bit smaller you can give one and a half but between one and a half and two is the width that you're going to give to the brim of the hat. Inches. Okay. That is between uh, let's see one and a half is from between four and or five centimeters long okay so i will meet you here when i have my two inches i don't want to count the rounds so don't ask me uh, later in what round i started to decrease i'm gonna go by measurements okay that's why you need a measurement tapes here i have my two inches and look how nice that twisted um one by one rib look it look really nice and it's very uh, stretchy and let me measure that way you guys can see this is exactly two inches so now we're going to work with the same three strand for one inch of net okay so every one inch we're going to change one strand of color so now with the caramel or 10, T A N, 10, we're gonna knit a regular net stitch. No through the back strand, through the
through the front a strand that way is nice and flat so you're gonna do this for one inch or two and a half centimeters okay so I will meet you here when I have that done every single uh, round is net so it's very easy okay so I finished that extra inch so I have three inches now so you're gonna start by measuring from here to here I have three when I do the next change it will be four and then five and so on okay it will be better to measure from the border so now we're gonna cut one of these uh, caramel color uh, jar and we're gonna work with two of the caramel and one of the chocolate um, jar so I cut this a strand now I have this one ready and what you're gonna do is make sure that the one you're gonna work is not the tail so I'm gonna put these two tails together later I will do a knot with them so you grab, you see, with that finger there, and holding the two tails in here. And then I'm going to start with this three strand to net. Now I let go. And now I'm going to do a little knot with these two, that way they don't get loose. And later you'll lose these tails. Unfortunately, this is not a reversible hat because of the tails. Only if you lose them really, really well that you don't see them. Okay. So now my work is secure. And I'm going to continue working like this for another inch. So when you have four inch work with this three strand, I will meet you here to change again. Okay, so like that you're going to continue. Here I have the extra inch. I already cut one of the caramel color. And now we're going to work with two chocolate and one caramel. Probably I make, <laughs> make you want to have some chocolate. <laughs> because I want to have some chocolate. <laughs> So now you're going to work like this, again with two and one, but the other way around, for another inch. Let me tie these two. That way my stitch don't go loose in the inside. So now I will continue working like this for one more inch. That will be five. And then after that we're going to change to all uh, chocolate color and start the decrease of the crown of the hat. We're going to work with the chocolate for around, with the decreases and everything else, but just in the chocolate color for around three more inches and total, total will be like five five and a bit inches for this size hat okay that will look really nice so I will meet you here when I finish with these three colors okay already finished with all the caramel color I am gonna change to the chocolate and I gonna hold that tail in the back and start working them and I'm gonna knit with the chocolate for half an inch so when I have around five and a half inch of the hat I will start separating where I'm gonna do the decrease okay so now I'll tie those two tails in here I saw that I left longer that chocolate tail but don't matter because I just lose it in that space Okay. 
So now I'll continue with the chocolate, when I have five and a half inches, I will meet you here. Don't have to be exactly five and a half, can be five and a half and a bit or less, depending on the size of the hat. I wanted to mention, if you like, before you cut the caramel color, you can uh, continue working uh, for a little bit more and then change to the chocolate and that will be a little bit less chocolate in the top. But this is my first hat, so I think the next one will be much better, okay? So I'll continue working with the chocolate until I have five and a half inches, give or take. I finished that extra half um, inch, and I will look like this. And I'm really in love with this combination of stitch leather, this gradient color leather. And now uh, we're going to separate our stitches in a spaces of 12, and place in the marker, and then in the next, next round we will do uh, the decrease. So you're going to separate your stitches by netting 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, and ten, eleven, and twelve. You will place the marker, net twelve more, place the marker, net twelve more, place the marker, and you'll have six of these twelve stitches of space. And with the marker, it'll be more easier to do the decrease because we're going to do the decrease in the two stitch before each markers. I separated all my six spaces and I already did the first decrease in here. I record that in Spanish, so now I will do one for you guys in English. But the decrease will be in alternative rounds. And the first round that we're going to do now, we're going to do a decrease. The next one, you don't do any decrease, you just knit all the stitches. The one after that, you do a decrease and so on. One round decrease, one round no. Until you have six stitches left on each space between the markers. Uh, but remember, when you don't can work anymore with a circular needle, you will change to the double pointed needle. For the double pointed needle, since we have six spaces and five needles, we have to use four needles to place the stitches. So you will put the space in between two markers, so two decrease space, and one needle, one in the next one, two in the other one, and one in the last one. That will be your six uh, spaces. And then you leave one, number five, to do the work around. Um, so you will do your decrease until you have six stitches that will be alternating rounds after that in every single round you will do the decrease and then you will work until you have two stitches on each space that will be 12 stitches in total and then we'll close the top of our hat so in this first round a decrease it will be like this and all the rounds will be the same the last two stitches together so you'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten and eleven and twelve, you will do them together. And like that, you're gonna continue all the way around. The next round, no decrease, and then the round after that, you will do nine stitches and ten and eleven together, and so on. So it's a very easy uh, a stitch to decrease to follow. So I'm gonna show you this round anyway. So this one is the one that you just knit all your stitches. I don't want to leave any detail without explanation. So 
I just wanted to show you how you're gonna do this round and then after that you can continue by yourself doing the decrease until you have six stitches you will do these alternating uh, rounds uh, but before that probably you will be working already with the double pointed needle I'm gonna work off camera and when I'm ready to uh, pass the stitches to the DPN and then I will show you how you're gonna do that okay but there's no point for me to show you every single row because it will make the video longer and it's the same same that I show you in those two last rounds. In the next one you will do the last two stitches before the marker together and the other one no decrease and the other one the last two stitches before the marker and so on. Okay? So I can't work anymore with this uh, circular needle. I'm going to change to the DPM's needle. So something that I wanted to mention is if you um, don't have double pointed needle you can pull the cable out a little bit and do some stitches pull it and but if you can afford a, some uh, double pointed needle I recommend to buy them they're um, not that expensive these bamboo needles uh, I'm gonna leave the link in the description box below I really recommend them because uh, they make things easier for you and a better finish to your piece either for hats or socks stuff like that so now I'll show you how I'm going to pass the stitches to my um, piece.
So here I have my work in my double pointed needles. So in this one I have two groups of stitches with the marker in between. In this one one, in this two, in this one because we have six and we only have four of these needles. Because number five is to do the work around, okay? So I recommend when you want to work with the double pointed needle, the right hand needle, the one that is to the right, always keep it close and in the outside, okay? You see, in the outside here, that way when you do your work, they go together and that one don't interfere in between these two and here, okay? And this one's in here. Now this one for me is a row or decrease, so I have to do one, two, three, four, and five, and six and seven together. And then I only have six stitches. That means that I have to do decrease in every single round until I have two in this side and two in this one will be four, two in this one, and two and two, and two in this one. In total, twelve stitches. Okay. So that's what I recommend to do when you're working with double pointed needles. So I will show you how you're gonna work the your double pointed needle just in case you never done that. So you're gonna come here and always this one, the one to the right, try to be in the outside of this one that you're gonna work. That way it's not on the way of your work and when you do the first stitch it will come close to that one and you don't have a hole in that space. So you start netting until the two before the marker and then you do those two together. So that's why the marker makes things much easier. You don't even have to count. So if you are scared to do work with double point and needle because you think that this dish gonna fall off, you can buy these stoppers. You can put it in the end of the needle and your stitches don't gonna fall off. Okay, if you are a beginner with double pointed needle and you are scared to lose all your stitches, I was before I tried double pointed needle. I was, you know, like, no way that I can do that with so many needles. But once you do it, it's easy. You are working with these two like straight needles. Do the other ones in northern, and these two is the one that matter, and this is space. And it's like two stray needles. The only thing that they are with two points. So these last two, I will do them together. And you see, you, that's why you need five of these. They will come to this one. The only way the stitch will fall off is if you pull out your needle, okay? So again, this needle in the outside, when you do the first stitch, it will come close and then close that gap. But I really recommend to close your hands with a double pointed needle. It's a much better uh, finish. This two. And then in there. And the place where I started now, I had to do decrease like exactly like that in every single round until I have two in each space. So I will meet you here when I'm ready just to sew the top of the hand. So I finished with all the decrease and I left this marker here that way you guys can see that in this needle I have two in this side of this marker, two on the other side, two in this needle, uh, four in this one, two on each side of the marker and two in this one. So in total 12. Now what we're going to do is cut a strand of yarn long enough to pass us through those uh, stitches and loose our tail. So I'm ready to work. Uh, these stitches to cast them off to this strand of yarn so you're gonna leave this one down and then you'll start passing your stitches through your needles
So now you're gonna lose all your tails and then you're done your hat. I'm gonna do that and I will show you the end result. Before I show you the end result, I want to show you that my ball of yarn is still like full. Honestly, I can make with this a sweater for William and I still have leftover yarn. That's how much I know is a lot of yarn, but you're using three strands. So for I weighed them and some of them still I have the uh, one of these I have over a hundred gram and still 104 I guess that one came heavier I wish I have weighed them before I start recording but I went by the label 100 grams each so this caramel first I did a swatch to see the circumference for William's head and to see if the 72 stitches were fine and yes it was fine so I throw that out so I use a little bit more of this because of that. So I'm going to weigh them together. And I have 274 grams. That means I use 26 grams between the hat and the swash. Let me weigh these one single ones. This one it has 104 gram more than <laughs> I started with <laughs> because I, I thought there was a hundred gram so it's just showing you how little jar you use 96 gram of this one and 95 gram of that one so you hardly use any jar to make this gorgeous gorgeous hat Honestly, with this, you can make probably six hats with this leftover that you have in there. So if you sell hats, this will be a great uh, way to, to do them. And let me tell you, you will love, love this jar for hats. This is my first time. I have this. I use this for crochet, summer stuff, and a single strand, but I try this for my first time and I'm in love. All my hat I think of this winter going to be done with this uh, jar because look at the stretch. It has a really nice stretch and it feels really soft and it's beautiful and it's warm and these I think don't going to have too much um, you know peeling like little Things that they get as you use them because it seems like another type of yarn. So I'm gonna make next week a matching little neck warmer with the same colors. So I hope you guys like it and give it a try and the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you are not already a subscriber. And if you make this hat or any of my piece and you want to send me some picture, you can do it through my Facebook page Ruby Steadman Crochet or my Instagram Ruby Steadman Crochet. Please share my videos with friends and family, that way you help me grow here in YouTube. Um, I wish you have a beautiful day.